We're going to own it. There's three boats behind us. Yeah. <laughs> How good's that, team? Three boats behind us. There's about nine in front of us, but there's three behind us, so we're pretty happy. G'day everyone, welcome back to Life on the Hulls. Uh, last week I left you hanging after completing my water tank, so I decided to add a couple more uh, 70 litre water tanks up in the bow compartments of the cat. Um, this actually created quite a lot of work and uh, it was unforeseen work, but it, it certainly did need to be done and uh, that's what this episode is going to concentrate on and we're going to do a bit of sailing, so uh, hopefully you enjoy the, uh, the weekend sailing regatta that we went on in uh, late October. Here we go guys. So I'm the first to admit it, I love a good gadget. Um, one thing that I uh, hate doing is buying stuff that I never use. It drives me mental when I buy something and then it just sits there and I never use it. But I uh, had this thing pop up in my Facebook feed about 400 times one month and it's this thing and I bought it and I thought I'm going to use that and I've just found the perfect use for it. They're going to support the tank on each end and that'll get it level and it'll give me the opportunity to basically make a quick, very, very useful mount. I'll put three or four layers of glass over it uh, and I'll put some mounts some straps on the top to be able to tie it down, similar to what I did in a fuel tank. But the thing is with this, it's gonna make it so much easier. I've been racking my brains how I was gonna do it. I think um, putting in plywood down the bilge is just not a good idea for me. You know, I don't uh, believe in wood down in the bilge, but you know, I'm gonna, uh, I'm going to give it a crack and use that new tool to see if I can work out exactly uh, the shape and the contour I need to form this stuff up to make my mounts. So hopefully you can see where I'm sort of heading to here. Um, I'm going to put these blocks in here, make them sort of, you know, a lot smaller than, than these and have the tank physically sit on there and then I'll put some paddle shaft, carbon paddle shaft through there and have straps that tie over the top. Now these are going to be a lot smaller than the ones I did with my fuel tank. I don't think uh, these 80 litre tanks or 78 litre tanks are really going to warrant a ton of strapping, but I certainly am going to make sure that I've put in adequate to make sure they never ever move and I don't want any uh, wood down here in the bilge so uh, this foam will certainly do the job. I may even make it out of the uh, the thinner foam, just 30 mil foam. I don't really think I'm going to need this at 60 mil thick at the moment so I may need to, um, to thin these out. I'm I think I'd cut the hole a bit bigger, wouldn't you? Because I've got another, yeah, probably 10 centimetres of hole in it to cut, but I just cannot be asked to cut it, and I don't want to cut it too big, so I'm just forever squeezing in and out. Good job I'm a bit thinner these days. Okay, I've got these very bizarre shapes, and I'm um, sort of hoping they're going to work, because it's all a little bit, uh, it's a little bit up the clouds at the moment as to how these things are going to work. But I think the positioning of them Well, that was rather unpleasant. Um, so what I need to do now is just clean the region that I've just sanded with that uh, roller sander. I mean, without that, I don't know what you'd do. You'd be in there with a flat disc. The crap would be going everywhere. But um, I've got to clean that now. And uh, it's had a good sand. And now I need to uh, embed these with the sea light foam before I do my tabbing. Now, you'll notice also that I've coved 
the foam here so that I can actually get plenty of bedding compound into this bedding um, region here before I actually uh, glue it to the side of the boat. So if you have a look down here, these go in like so, in place like so, and form the basis of my tank bed. Now I haven't gone across the middle. I'm gonna tidy these up once I get them in place because I just want them to look nice and neat. But So it's actually easier to glass them in and then tidy them up than it is to do them bespoke out here and then fit them. So fitting them in situ is actually a lot easier than doing it uh, retrospectively. But for now, I'm just gonna give this area a quick clean. And because this has been some months, I'm going to give it a very light wipe, wipe with, wipe with acetone to make sure that I've got this. Not a lot of acetone. You don't want it dissolving your substrate. I mean, I've said it before that I don't use it, but when it's been so long, you're better off to uh, get a bit of acetone on. Tell you what. I thought the time down here was done, but uh, this decision to put these extra tanks in is going to pay off, but you know, it really is starting to grate on me. Um, I don't often get the shits and lose it, but I lost it about five minutes ago. I was sick of being down in these buildings. So I'm going to catalyze this, uh, this bedding compound at about 2% because I want to go off pretty quick. And uh, I'm going to basically Get a really nice quick set here so that I can come back first thing in the morning and um, and tab these in because they're not going to take much tabbing. It's only going to be probably a couple of hours work to get this side done and then I'll work on the other side and let it suck with these tanks in. And uh, you know, I'm heading towards a point where I can actually blast it down. I want them down before Christmas and uh, yeah, we've got some serious wind here today. It's uh, in the year of wind, and we've got this part here is going to go here. That's where she's going to live. So these are now uh, bedded in place and all I have to do tomorrow is come in and uh, tab them in place and then I'm going to tidy them up, get them exactly the right shape and then I'll add a couple of uh, composite angle slat beds, one on each side there and then uh, some um, lashing points on the top of them, uh, possibly some tube or a hole through there but not really sure yet. Well, that was absolutely no fun at all. Um, wow, it's so hot in here. Right? It's like 43, 44 in here. Um, oh, let's grab a sip for a minute. Um, what I've done is I've now tabbed those tank bulkheads in. It's not the tabbing that's the problem, it's the position. I'm jammed up in there. It's about a foot and a half long, and I'm jammed up in there. And I can't really get on my knees or anything, so I'm sort of squatting and yeah, and yeah, the sweat's just dripping off me. It's hot, but you know, that's going to be off in about an hour. I'm going to be able to work on that uh, first thing in the morning. I mean, basically, you're just freaking force curing everything in here at the moment. Yeah, so they're ready now for the tank to be, to be fitted. I'm going to have to do some trimming and some sealing along the foam edge. And then I'm going to have to put some mounts in. So I've still got a bit of work to do down there, but you know, it's on its way. I'm going to go over and do the other side in about 10 minutes when I cool off a bit. <laughs> right, eh? so this is the port side. Um, I wasn't going to do it. I was going to actually head home for the day, but you know, it's nothing like coming to work the next day knowing you've done something you've put off <laughs> the day before. It is hot. I'm really hot and bothered, but you know, I figure while well, I've got all the stuff here, I might as well get the thing done. I'm gonna tab all these in and then I'll be able to go away tonight, come back tomorrow and clean up and hopefully get them, you know, pretty much done tomorrow afternoon and then I can start thinking about getting these tanks in, getting these floors down. All right, so these guys are done yesterday. I've just come in and uh, they're rock solid, so I'm gonna clean these up. I'm gonna do a test fit of the tank 
in these bolsters and I'm gonna start to trim them and neaten them up. Now I do need to seal the foam here with, uh, with resin, very important. And I'm also considering putting a couple of the composite angle slats on here just to add a bit of extra support. It'll also give me something to tie the strap to rather than punching holes in here, I'll be able to strap it around underneath the uh, those uh, angle supports. So some of this composite angle, make a bit of a slack bed on there, just enough to support the tank and take the pressure off those pressure points as we had here, here on our fuel tanks. So the one thing I love about fiberglass is you can sort of start to add stuff and then you know make a turd look really good. So these are starting to look a little bit better. They're gonna be uh, sanded now with my roller sander and then I'll glass over the top of them with a layer of 300 and then a couple of layers of the really fine matting that I've got. And that'll be ample for these, um, these mounts. And then what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna cut rebates in them and put an angle on each side. So they're starting to look quite uh, a lot better than they did before and then it'll be a, simply a matter of just flow coating over the top and it'll be back to as it was uh, six months ago when I actually flow coated these holes out so um, you can make a mess and then start again and come back to it but uh, yeah that's the beauty of fiberglass you can always polish a turd <laughs> well, there's absolutely nowhere for me to mount a tripod up here so I'm just going to have to follow the tank down with the camera uh, that is perfect. So I've just done a bit of a check. Um, my floor height is the base of that timber. Now, you've got to remember that that's actually going to be a hatch. So I'm going to have an extra 25 millimeters or inch above that and then the floor will come down so essentially although this looks like it's pretty close and doesn't allow a lot of room the actual floor is going to be here because along here there's going to be a hatch that allows access into this whole um whole region here so essentially it'll be like that be a hatch that i can just lift the floor out and get access to those so i've had to consider that all the way through this build getting these tank levels right, making sure that my fittings are going to have enough room and plenty of access. And the other thing too, is I need to have a hatch big enough to be able to access this bilge pump down in here. That's the final thing in this compartment here that I needed to consider. So there'll be a probably a 1500 or 1100 gallon an hour bilge pump down in the front here, just for any chance of water into this compartment because that is a sealed watertight compartment in here now. Right, hey, team, it's time to flocate the uh, forward cabin tank builders. Now, I deliberated as to whether to put these tanks in. Um, I am concerned about that extra 160 kilos of weight up in the bow of this boat, but I'm gonna put them in, and then if we have to leave them empty, and then if we're at anchor, we can take on fresh water and, uh, and survive a bit longer, then so be it. These small bulkheads uh, have all had a good sand. I've sanded pretty much around six inches or so, around about 15 centimetres, all the way around the outside of them so that I can blend the flow coat back in all the way along and, uh, and redo this section where I've made it pretty grubby, but it's all been cleaned. I'm about to give it a good wipe with some styrene, get that all sort of sticky and tacky again, and then I'll, uh, I'll re-flow coat it just with a brush and uh, you know, worst case scenario is I'll give it another sand later on and tidy it up. But yeah, it's gonna look pretty good in about five minutes. I'm gonna be happy to be back to uh, square one. I may actually use one of them as a grey water tank. I haven't really decided what I'm gonna do, but I've done a lot of prep down in here, put in the, uh, the bulkheads, the false bulkheads here, and I'm gonna flow coat this region out again, as I did once before, and finish it. And then I'm gonna put some angle in underneath to support it. So the idea is that uh, these bolsters will provide at least a tank somewhere to sit and then I can uh, I can get my floors glassed down once I get these straps in place. So that's been my plan all along. I'm gonna flow coat it now, get it done, and then I can uh, move on <laughs> yet again. All 
Oh, that's, that's looking pretty good now, nice and neat. It's all flow coated. I was going to just simply put some stainless saddles here and here with some straps over the top, but I've decided to use the old uh, carbon tube. And in fact, I was going to use some PVC pipe, but I'm better off using this. This is like a 25 mil. Uh, carbon tube from an old stand-up paddleboard paddle that I cut up and I'm just going to uh, bore a hole through here, here, here and here and that'll give you my tank strap mounts and uh, and I'll just glue them in with epoxy that's all it's going to take, a little bit of a fillet be nice and neat, it's all done and, uh, and then I can uh, put some composite angle underneath just two pieces of composite angle underneath to act as a bed for this tank and this job is going to be complete So in the same vein as what I did with my fuel tank beds I intend to embed couple of these composite angles in to these mounts to give these tanks something flat to sit on to avoid this pressure point here, here and certainly back here as well so That's it. That's working I think. Tell me if it's... Yeah, tell it down. That's it. Okay, I'm pretty happy with the way these came up. Um, they're not dead straight. This one here can't be to maintain the level. It actually has to be on an angle. It's almost following the line of the hull. And there's also the bottom of the tank actually not straight. It's not square. It has uh, rebates that is designed to fit down deep into the hull of a power boat or something. But anyway, it's what I've got to work with. So I'm going to glass these in with some epoxy, some thickened epoxy. I'm also going to put the carbon tubes in here. And I've just been down there sanding these up. So they're all sanded and ready to accept some um, some epoxy. I've given them a quick wipe with some acetone. So as it stands, this tank, as you can see, is dead level. And then I'll be able to simply strap from there, straight across, and once again over here, and hold these tanks in place. Not gonna lie, this has been the most physically, mentally challenging thing I've ever done in my life. I mean, I absolutely love it, but Jesus, some days just, it's taxing. <laughs> it's taxing. And anyone that has ever built a boat um, anywhere near this size, even half this size, will attest to the, the challenges of getting in and out, up and down, and squashing yourself into tiny little holes. I mean, I've built a couple of houses in my time, but nothing has ever challenged me like this. Nothing is simple, nothing is straight, nothing is a box. It's all round, curved off centre, you know, nothing uh, can can describe the work that goes into doing this freaking thing. And, and you know, doing it twice. You do one and you think, oh, that's done here. I'm going to do the other freaking side. But anyway, I'm here and I'm loving it. And uh, yeah, it's been a pretty tough few months. This is, uh, you know, I thought I'd be out of the build just by now. And this is my little, um, my little happy rant because I cannot wait to get up out of this friggin' hole. So very exciting guys, I've just come up to Sydney, uh, it's Thursday night, we're going to head off on a three day sail on a Sea Wind 1160, Ron and Leslie's, and uh, we're heading off, we've just provisioned the boat for three days, it's only three days, but it's the Sea Wind Regatta, and uh, well, I've just met him down in Balmain here, we're about to head off, so he's looking forward to an awesome weekend, it's a bit windy though tonight, but we're going to head over to Manly, anchor up, crash tonight, and, uh, and then head off, so. So we've been here for about three or four hours, sort of provisioning and getting organised, and uh, we're all ready to go. We've got our food on board, opera house in the background, and a harbour bridge. Here she is, better than shares, all ready to go. And we're all loaded, all ready. We've got our bedding all sorted, we've got our food sorted, we've got uh, a couple of beers for later on. Hey, 
way back to the Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. I just realised what I was going on. Maybe a bit more. <laughs> These are seagulls feasting on the bogons. Hey, what a scene, eh, tonight? Gotta love Sydney. Good old sitters. I love it. It's my old hometown and uh, pretty happy to be out here cruising. Yes. We've got Ron's trivia going on over here. Uh, for all you boaties, see this? Oh, yeah, I don't know whether you can see it, but there's a three-masted schooner over here with three red lights on the top and I'm wondering if any of my viewers can tell me why there's three red lights on the top of it and uh, I'd like you to leave a comment in the comment field and let me know what you think so they're pretty uh, it's a pretty impressive schooner it's a bit hard to see but there are three lights and they're red lights why would they have red lights instead of white lights okay the questions there guys time for you guys to answer so we've just spent a good hour or so filling up our water tanks and we've given this boat like the most amazing scrub with, uh, with some of that bright side deck wash. Yeah, we're heading out of Sydney Harbour now and basically it's nice and quiet. There's not a lot of ferries around. There's not a lot of boats once we've gotten past the, uh, the Opera House and the Harbour Bridge here, but uh, just a beautiful night. The wind's starting to die and uh, we're in for three days of sailing. Doing. Mostly sitting there enjoying our cup of coffee. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's, it's actually draining. It's draining? Only very slowly. Okay. Uh, I think you've got to go past the sea cog. Yeah, I'm going to dram this right. It, what, what does it do? Has it got an elbow? Yeah, there's an elbow. Later, John. Please. Yeah. I'm gonna give you some soap, Dan. I didn't get it on me. You uh, did. It's on your forehead, Dan. I can see it. Really? Is yeah. it on the fucking floor? Oh, it's still steep. Well, if we don't do this, yeah, I'm not giving you again. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Ron. <laughs> Leave him like that, eh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Have a bit of soap. Oh, we've got plenty of water, haven't we? Yeah. She's a bit bouncy. And uh, yeah, a bit, it's comfortable, but it's a bit challenging. Got the heady pulled in a little bit. Bit of a motoring coming into um, the basin on pit water. Beautiful day. We had a pretty windy sail up the coast from Sydney Harbour. It was about um, 25, 28 knots. So we had a couple of reefs in, and then we just dropped the sail. It wasn't worth it. It was too hard to uh, to sail straight up into the northerly wind. Due, almost due north, we had to go. So it was a bit of a difficult sail. We couldn't quite get the point without going 10 k's out. So getting ready for a couple of races this weekend. So we're going to race. Sabo at three, and then again tomorrow. I think there's another race all day, and then uh, and then we'll overnight, and then we'll head back to Sydney Harbour on Sunday. What a awesome way to spend all again! Right, this is what we came here for. Three o'clock. I've just spent the last two hours scrubbing the hull, so we should hope to gain it like half a knot, probably a bit more than uh, half a knot. It had a bit on there, and we've cleaned it all out. We've cleaned out a couple of the uh, through holes that had some growth or muscles growing up inside it. But uh, yeah, we're heading out. The guys are setting up up here. We've just had a pretty long lunch, so um, it's been a bit of a challenge getting the sail up, I reckon, after a beer, but we'll be okay. And uh, sails are up. We're off. We're off. Here we go. They're giving us another 15 minutes because we're a bit slow off the mark. <laughs> Tardy sailors here, I'll tell you. No, we're into it. We got it. We got it. We got it happening. 
Okay, we're heading out on uh, the Seawind Regatta Race 2. It's Saturday morning, 10.30 start. We've got uh, Leslie, Sue, and we've got Al on the helm. We're expecting some very clear instructions today. Ronnie's, uh, what are you doing today, Ron? Strategy and trimming. Strategy and, and yelling at us, I think. Yeah. And, uh, and Janet and I are over there on the main. And well, I've the, been uh, practicing my swear words. <laughs> just, so, just so we know we're sailing. He swears a lot. He really does. Don't he likes worry, a good. We'll you in check. It's called uh, profanity, this boat. <laughs> <laughs> or it might be by the end of this race. We'll uh, we'll see how it unless, goes. Unless the owner's swearing at the crew, they don't know they're on board. <laughs> We've got to make it real. It's Keep it real, Ronnie. Kind of... Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I, I think I'm with you, Sue. Yeah. If you don't mind a bit of swearing, look at Leslie chilling out. It's all about to happen. So I'm going to get off here. Let's get into it. Solving problems as we as we race, that's what it's all about. And Al's doing an awesome job here, and Ronnie's like the tactician. And, I've, right, got, buddy? I've, and I've got the stickies, hey. <laughs> We're doing repairs on the go. That's part of it, eh? You happy with your sail here, Al? Yeah, good. Been pretty good, mate. It's flying along. 6.5 knots. I think we got the seven and a half on that reach. It's not a bad effort. That's We're gonna own it. There's three boats behind us. <laughs> How good's that, team? Three boats behind us. There's about nine in front of us, but there's three behind us, so we're pretty happy. There was a mark in here, in, just in here, about 20 metres offshore, and uh, yeah, it was pretty hairy, and there was no wind in there. And two didn't run aground. And we had two, uh, yeah, put this, mini keels ran aground in there, and one possibly had to uh, start his motor to get off the ground. So anyway, that's, uh, that's racing, I guess. That is racing. You broke a nail, Sue. Gee. Feels lucky that you have a nail to break. Well, I don't now. So there's a big uh, sea wind raft up in here. We're hoping to pick up a mooring. We don't really want to raft up in this wind. It's going to be a bit of a, a bit of a beast. We had 35 knots about uh, 10 minutes ago. We had, seriously, we were doing 12 knots and uh, our Genoa just went psycho when we tried to furl it. So yeah, a bit of a good experience that was, I'll tell you. It was like a freaking wildcat flying in the wind trying to furl it in. It just went psycho. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine boats. It's not a bad raft up, eh? <laughs> we got 30 knot winds and we're all anchored up here together blown around. What a raft up. And there's another two. We've got another. Two 1160s just jolts to 1250 on the end there. All hell's broken loose here. We've got 10 sea winds in a line. We've got anchors down. We've got everything. We're going to have to scramble. We've broken the raft and it's not a good scene. So we're going to basically go and pull in our anchor, I think, once we get rid of these guys. So we're racing again, we've got 32 knots, currently at about 21 knots, and uh, gusts to 32, so we've got uh, uh, two reefs in our main at the moment, which is uh, you know, consistent with the race rules. They wanted at least one reef, but we've gone for two. And we've got a couple of, a couple of nice boats just ahead of us, and I uh, hate to tell you, but we're at the end. <laughs> we're at last, and we were in the prime spot. 
Well done. Doing a great job, Ron. Doesn't matter, mate. You say it didn't matter with this great Save your bait, mate. There we go, they've got a wild dip there. Hold on to that, Jen. Oh, we got wind now. We got wind. There we go. I'm going to pull that in a bit. That's ballooning at the front, mate. Everyone's got their reefs in, so we've got two reefs in here, two here, one reef in here, two up here. These guys probably got three in, I'd imagine, but uh, actually they've got three up there. So yeah, they've got to... Everyone's been very cautious because it is windy in this channel here. Well, probably should have named better, shouldn't we, Al? Well, I mean, 38 knot gus. If it's 38 here, <laughs> then you're going to get 45 out there, right? 45 out there, yeah. So 45 knots would have been really interesting in a race. So we got, we only had two reefs in, and we had about half a Genoa. So it was, uh, it was a bit interesting. And there about four boats pulled out just before we did, mate. We were almost a monohull, weren't we? Yeah, there's three boats out. Yeah. I think. Yeah. Three boats pulled out. Yeah, they're there's coming up behind us. Yeah, that's four. Yeah. And you always know a dedicated sailor when he has time and no races, and he's doing knots. Isn't that right, Al? That's right. What are you making, mate? I'm trying to make a carrot spin, which is going to turn into a monkey's fist. Right. That's interesting. Let's have a look at that. Oh, look at the thing. Wow. So what's a monkey's fist? What do you use that for? Coiling. Ah. Throw it at someone knock them out. Is that to make a sail tie, is it? It's a weapon. You hit, make it to hit people. <laughs> There goes the SS Minnow, off to, off to Gilligan's Island. And we've got Mary Ann with the pigtails. Classic. <laughs> All good, mate? <laughs> we've got Mary Ann over here with pigtails. I hardly knew them anyway. The only reason I know is because I went on Google for that thing. Janet never watched Gilligan's Island because she was, grew up in Britain. You right, Marianne? <laughs> Come on, Gilligan, get out. Racing was yes. this. <laughs> <laughs> Some of us nearly finished the second race. <laughs> but we couldn't. Partly because I'm pretty sure Michael put the finish line where it was too shallow to actually get to. Thanks for joining me this week guys, I know it's uh, been a little bit of sailing and uh, a little bit of boat building in this week's episode, don't forget to give it a like and, uh, and, and subscribe and you know if you can share it out I'd really appreciate it, it's, uh, it's always good to share the, share the love or share the knowledge, you know share it out to anyone that might be interested, I love it. Thanks for joining me and, uh, and thanks again to my patrons, I really appreciate that, you know that's just an incredible uh, thing for me to be able to uh, to get on with my job and not worry too much about whether I'm going to be able to afford a coffee in the morning. <laughs> Running out of cash. No, nah, only joking. Loving it, guys. Thanks, guys. I've got a very fortunate life. I'm a lucky guy. And to be able to come up and experience this sort of thing with uh, with some really experienced sailors has been tremendous for Janet and I. We, uh, we've been so fortunate to be able to get to spend this time racing on this boat. And, uh, yeah, just thanks to our Ronnie... Uh, uh, Ron and Leslie who are taking us up here and, uh, and nurturing us in, in you know, otherwise uh, we'd be paying out big, big dollars to try to get this sort of experience and I'm just absolutely, you know, indebted to you guys. Thank you so much. And anyway, catch you later guys and we'll see you next time on Live on the Hulls. Really is Live on the Hulls this week, isn't it guys? Hey, having a ball. Beautiful. <laughs>